Hi, this is Tim Just, the 8020 TD. T H E 80 20TD.com. Let's look at WinTD and let's look at how to use a master file. A little bit later on, we'll show you two methods you can use to create a master file. And in a separate video, we'll show you how you can use your Excel spreadsheet and your databases to make a master file. What is a master file? Well, let me show you one. I've already created a tournament here to help us out and save some time. I'm going to open a master file that already exists. Let's open this master file right here. Notice the PPL extension. If you don't see your master file right away, you of course can go searching for it. We've looked at that in other videos. Double click. This is a list of players that continually play in my event. If you're a Scholastic coach or a Scholastic organizer in TD, this is particularly useful because you'll tend to have the same teams entering your events over and over and over again. Even if you only have one event a year, a lot of the players will come back year after year. If you run several events a year, having, having this list is just invaluable because you can use this list, which you'll keep updated with every golden database, as a starting point for populating and entering players into your tournament. First thing you should do every time you load a golden database and you have a master list is open it up, go to the master list and use this option, update from USCF supplement. What you say? This will go look at the golden database you've uh, installed and it'll update every player on your list. That's what's sort of cool. It keeps your list totally updated. If you're running a club, this works just as well as if you're running Scholastic events. Update from USCF Supplement, yeah, something doesn't match, we know. What happened was the ratings and the expirations all were updated. Pretty slick, huh? Once they've been updated, what you can do is enter them in tournaments. If you get a single entry, let's say we get this player here, you uh, notice that what we have is he's a second grader. He's also rated 1093. So he qualifies for our grade two section. Let's put him in our grade two section. Let's just drag him there. Grade two. Yes, he paid. Okay. Uh, let's look at this player here and a player that wants to play up into the uh, D section. This player also wants to play up into the D section. I've highlighted both of them using my control click and I drag them into my D section. They're entirely entered into that event. How else can you use this? Well, if you sort on your master list, for instance, edit, change layout, you sort by team because often if you're running a scholastic event you'll get a lot of entries in the same team envelope. Look at this team right here. Look at the different teams we have all listed alphabetically. If you receive some entries from this team but not everybody and you'll notice that their ratings are quite low you can just pick the students who are entering make sure they get into the event in this case unrated that you want to put them in. How else could you use this list? Edit, change layout, let's sort by grade. If you sort by grade, well, let's see, here's a second grader. Oh, here's all these second graders and we have a second grader section. Let's select all the second graders, no matter what their team is. By the way, we're going to show you in a separate video how to create these team codes and the team list so that you can use them when you run your scholastic tournaments. I'm going to continue picking the second graders. Then I want to enter into my grade two section. What if you get a player who's not on your master list? Well, that's pretty easy to take care of. All you've got to do is go up to Master and add a player. Adding a player to the Master list is similar to 
the video we made about adding a player to your tournament. The easiest way is to enter their ID number. Let's enter me, 10334471. And I'm going to get it from my golden database. There I am. Double click. You can then fill in this other information if you feel it's necessary. You might not feel it's necessary to enter this information. You might only want the rating. You might only want the ID. You can add the prize group grade. Let me tell you now, that's going to be the grade. And the team code. It makes entering much easier. Then you'll click OK and you'll go about your business. Let me show you what you can do if you've never ever created a master file and how you can quickly populate it. Let's first close this master file. No, I don't want to save the changes. We're going to go to master. We're going to create a new master list. We're going to call it the 80-20. Oh, isn't that clever of me? going to save it. And when you save it, you get a blank screen like this. Yes, we can go up here to master and add a player one at a time on this screen. That's kind of ineffective. If you know you're going to be using the same players over and over and over again, pick one of your old tournaments like I have here. You might remember from a previous video that we can highlight all the sections that are important to us and what we can do is go to our section screen and list the players combined sections. Why? Well we want to populate our master list. All the players in this event are eventually going to be on our master list if we don't have one created yet. I'm going to click on here and I'm going to go to edit and I'm going to select all and then I'm going to drag them onto our master list and there they are. Did you see them appear? They're all on our master list now. You can continue to add players from other tournaments this way onto your master list. Let's save this. Let's not forget to save our new master list, okay? Let's see. Is that under master? No, it's not there right now. So I'll bet you, as long as you're clicked on the master list, you can save the master file by going to File and scrolling down. There you go. All saved. You can change anything you want on here. Let's click on one player. As a matter of fact, let's double click. There you go. That's everything but his address. That might be important to you. You might want to add that. Or you might not. All the other information that's important to you about this player is already on the list. That's all for now. We'll show you sort of a little bit geekier way that you can take information and suck it right off a spreadsheet or get it directly from a database and populate with all the players that you have already listed in those sources on your master file. We'll see you next time.